Today's repair, we're going to be working on adjusting the dampening bar on this Adams vibraphone. You'll need an M5 and M4 hex wrench and a set of pliers. And this repair works on all of the current Adams vibraphone models. The first thing you want to do is remove any extra dampening devices from the dampener bar. This includes moleskin or piano felt like you see here. You want that dampener bar to be in its original state before adjusting it. You also want to take the time now to check to make sure the cord is fitted properly into the suspension post on the rails. You can see on this vibraphone that all of the accidentals ring without even pushing the pedal down. And the low end of the naturals and the high end of the naturals also ring while the center bars of the naturals dampen. This is the dampening mechanism and its job is to push the bar back up into the dampening position. You want to make sure that your pull rod is connected to the dampening mechanism and to do that you pull down right here and slide the ball into the fitting. You want to make sure that it's seated properly. Next you want to make sure that the spring has enough tension on it to push the bar back up and if you turn the wing nut clockwise it'll loosen the tension and if you turn it counterclockwise it will tighten the tension. There are four main adjustments to the dampener bar. As you can see here, this is the low end, and this is rail four and rail three. Inside of rail three, there is a bolt, and if you use an M5 hex wrench, turning it clockwise will raise the rail, and turning it counterclockwise will lower the rail. You can also see that there is a point where the dampener bar connects to the frame, and here it simply slides in and out of place. At the top end, you have rail one and rail two, and outside of rail two is another adjustment bolt. This one works opposite of the low end adjustments. Above that, you'll see a pin to release the dampening bar. You simply slide this pin out and the bar will slide out. To reattach it, you pull the pin out, put the bar in place, and slide the pin back in. To check your dampener bar, you're going to play the low G sharp and the high C sharp. Now again, you can see that these are ringing without the pedal even being pushed down, so we have to adjust this a different way. But if your bars are dampening somewhat, but not the same, you can skip ahead to where we adjust rail number three. Next, we're gonna adjust the threaded connection piece, but before you do that, you wanna check to see if rail two is the same height as rail three. If it's not, you wanna use that adjustment on the high end of the keyboard to make it the same height. The third main adjustment point on this dampening system is a threaded connection piece. It connects the dampening mechanism to the dampener bar itself. The default length of this is 110 millimeters from end to end, but it can stretch up to 115 millimeters. Since our vibe is ringing too long, we need to lengthen this piece because that's going to push the dampening bar closer to the bars that we're playing. The threaded connection piece actually has a ball socket at both ends of it, and we want to get access to both ends. So to do this, we're going to take off all of the natural bars and we're going to remove the dampening mechanism. To remove the dampener bar, simply slide out the pin from the top end and then remove the bottom ball socket from inside the dampening mechanism and then slide the low end of the dampener bar off the frame. To remove the other ball socket from the dampener bar, simply pull. You can see that there are two ball sockets on this threaded connection piece, and the part without the nut on it connects to the dampener bar, and the part with the nut connects down inside the dampening mechanism. Now this dampening mechanism removes easily, so all you have to do is release the pull rod from the pedal, and then lift straight up on the dampening mechanism. You can see that this threaded connection piece is going to connect to this ball stud, and you want to slide it from underneath and over top of the stud. Now this is kind of hard to do with just grip strength. So what I like to do here is just take a set of pliers and squeeze them together. You want to hear this click into place. After you've got it to click into place, then we're going to take the dampening mechanism and place it back where it originally came from and then reconnect the pedal pull rod. Before reconnecting the dampening bar, we need to lengthen this connecting rod. And we do so by rotating this top ball socket counterclockwise one full turn. After you've rotated it one full turn counterclockwise, we can go ahead and reattach the dampening bar and make sure it clicks into place. To reattach the dampening bar, simply slide the low end onto the frame mount, and on the upper end, pull the pin out, slide the bar in place, and reset the pin. 
Also at this point, I like to just double check everything, make sure it's all in the right place. And that means checking the dampening bar and the ball joint in the middle. I also like to reset the fans here so they're both facing the same direction and it makes it easier when I reattach the bars. When you're putting the bars back on the instrument, make sure on rails one and four, the cord sits inside the suspension post. And then on rails two and three, they fit under the hook on these suspension posts. After you reattach all the bars, then you're gonna to wanna to check to see if they're dampening fully. If they're not dampening fully, you need to redo this process, except you don't have to take the entire keyboard apart. All you have to do is take the accidentals off of the keyboard, remove the top ball joint from the dampening bar, and spin it one turn counterclockwise. Reattach it, and then put the bars back on. Then you wanna repeat this process until you're satisfied with how the bars are dampening. So you can see that my low end is now dampening, but the high end is still ringing. So we're gonna adjust this rail three by dropping the low end, and we're gonna raise the high end. And we do this by turning the bolt counterclockwise, and you can do it half a turn or a full turn, and you can check it as you go. Then we move on to the natural bars, and you can see on this setup that the low end of the keyboard is ringing and the top end is dampening. So what I need to do here is lower the top end of rail two, and we do this by turning clockwise. But you notice here I second guessed myself and I ended up turning counterclockwise. And you can see that the top end is getting more dampened and the bottom end is ringing longer. And then I realized what I had done, so then I turned clockwise to reset where I originally was, and then gave it one extra rotation, and that seemed to fix my issue. And you do notice that the bar on the bottom rings a little bit longer, but after I did this video, I adjusted it. So the last adjustment point on this dampening system moves the dampening bar front to back, and that is located on the frame mount. To access this, you need to simply remove the low end bars, and then you use, I believe it's an M4 hex wrench to loosen this bolt, and then you can slide the bar front to back. The reason for this is you want the dampening bar to hit both the naturals and the accidentals the same amount, so they both end up dampening. You can now see all the bars are dampening with the pedal up, and then I did return this to the customer after making a few more small adjustments so everything dampened the same. Let me know if this video was helpful and what else you'd like to see.